Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the 13th edition of the Cover Live University Web Series. My name is Spencer Kitley, Customer Success Manager of Cover Live. Appreciate you joining us today for the latest webinar, and we look forward to sharing with you information on running successful live events for football and for other sports. Um, before we get started, I want to remind you to please mute your telephones, please mute your computer microphones. And uh, I also want to give you a brief overview of the format of today's Cover at Live University. We we'll set this webinar to run between 20 and 30 minutes, and as conclusion, we'll take questions from uh, from all of you via the client or the WebEx client chat window, which is available to you on the green bar at the top of your screen under chat. Additionally, if you have any questions during the presentation, you want to send those in. We may get to that and we can get back to you right away or save those for the end and answer on the line. Tomorrow, this webinar will be posted on CoverItLive.com underneath the Cover it Live University tab. Also, you'll also receive an email when it is available so you can share it with anyone who is unable to attend today or if you want to review it yourself. I want to remind you, you can email us at any time at support at CoverItLive.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, to stay up to date with uh, everything that's new with Cover It Live. And now, I'd like to introduce host of today's webinar, the general manager of Cover It Live, Ben Snyder. Hey, Spencer, and thanks everybody for joining today and taking some time uh, to go over some of the great things you can do at Cover It Live whenever you're covering sporting events. Obviously, with college and professional U.S. football upon us, um, and us being big sports fans ourselves, and we're certainly caught up in all the excitement of preseason and all the discussions and ready for real games to get started, and then not too long after that, you have a number of great sporting events with the World Series uh, coming in October with... Uh, basketball, NBA, and NHL kicking off. And then, of course, you've also got international football and soccer and other sports that have kicked off and are underway, and a lot of, of great fun that happened throughout the fall and winter, uh, the peak of sports season. So with that, we thought it would be a great opportunity to introduce you to some of the features that are really work well when we're covering sporting events and cover it live, um, some of the new things that we've added over the past year that you may not be aware of or that you may have not really used yet, um, as well as remind you of some of the great key things that you can do with your events that, uh, that may have been the platform for a while, but may not have been something you've taken advantage of before. So we'll cover a variety of things. We'll focus first on our new live scores, which is the ability for you to have real-time scores and updates from uh, key professional and college leagues inside Cover It Live automatically. And then on top of that, you can also have your manual scoreboards and the additional features that we've added around those. Um, the scoring feature has existed for a while, but we've added a great deal of flexibility around the types of scoreboarding that you can do and the data that you can track manually for scoreboards that, um, that we may not have live feeds for. But beyond that, there's a lot of other great things you can do with social tools, with rich media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, or the media library, and ways to engage your fans, including polls and trivia. And we'll cover a number of those things today and walk through some of those examples. So first, we'll jump into the scoreboard. And this is a key area where we're covering the sporting events. Obviously, people want to know what's going on. Now, you may have other means that, you're, that you have access to in which you can cover the score. Maybe there's other areas of the sites that you're hosting your events on that also track that information. Um, or maybe you expect most people are already following along on TV. But nonetheless, having the score and stats and real-time info right there in the context of the event is always really powerful and really useful and a great experience for your users. So it's something that's readily available to you as a part of the Covered Live platform, and we'd strongly encourage you to take advantage of it. There are a lot of professional leagues and colleges, uh, college sports that are covered through our live scores feed, and that does include the NFL, uh, Major League Baseball, NCAA football, uh, the NHL, and, uh, and NBA, as well as others. And I'll walk through a few examples of those inside the event studio. So for general purposes today, I've got our uh, event studio, the big game CILU event running to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like on the front end. We have a sample site set up as well. So this obviously looks like uh, the CBS sports site, but this is just a demo site. And this will be where a lot of our event content will come in today. And I'll show you some of the examples from here. You can see it already has some content that's been included from Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, etc. that have been put into our event. As a side note, you'll also notice this is our new channel page layout that we recently introduced that allows for no scroll bars and infinite scroll uh, that continues to take up the full length of the page, and as new items are added, those automatically flow in. Gives you a lot more layout flexibility, and there's even more coming uh, pretty soon on the horizon, but we'll get to that in next time's session. 
So jumping into Event Studio for this event, if you want to add scoreboards to your event, there's simply click on the scoreboard button from the right side of the Event Studio. Now, once you're in here, there's some nice help that can walk you through and let you know about live scores as well as manual scores, and you can see some of that help context here. You can also click on the information icons, and you can also check our support center where there's a lot of great information. Or if you want to reference that after or during this webinar as well, it's also a, a gives you more detail and can help you with reminders of anything that you've heard during the, this session. So first, let's choose our type. And we're going to look at both live scores and manual scores, but I'm going to start with live scores. So once you've selected live scores, you'll have an option to pick which league that you want to take scores from. You'll notice the NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, AHL, NCAA College Football, PGA Golf, as well as a number of European football and soccer leagues, including Bundesliga, EPL, and a number of others, as well as the U.S. and MLS. So we'll start off since baseball is in full force right now. We'll check out some of the uh, live baseball scores. So first you pick your league. Then you have options around what date of games that you want to use. You can always leave it on the most recent day's games if you want this to be a rolling sco scoreboard. And essentially, it will take whatever games are going on today or, um, or in the past few days if there isn't a current game, and it will show those. And it will constantly update so that way you don't have to come in and reconfigure what day's games you want to look at. But if you're going to be running one event per game or one event per day and you want to keep it focused on one particular set of games, then you can do that. You can simply select that particular date, and then you'll get a list of all the games on that date. You can pick the team that you want to be the default and that you want to highlight. If I know Spencer would probably pick the White Sox, I'll do that, even though personally uh, that's a team that I love, but that's all right. So here we've got our White Sox. KC game, and we've got live scores that will come in from later today whenever that game kicks off, or rather, uh, tips off. So, and now I'll use the metaphor again and get it wrong for both football and basketball. But whenever you look at the most recent day's games, you'll notice that you have uh, the ability to pick from any team. So this is a great option, again, if you want to have a rolling, ongoing stream updating, and you don't want to have to go set up a new event every single day. Whenever you look in here, you can see that you can take any particular team that you want from within that league. And it will default to their games, and if they don't have games for the current days, then other games will show up from the league um, and will automatically update with that team's games once they do have a game. We'll take a look at some of the other examples as well. Obviously, with football coming up soon, you can check out the football scores for all the NFL teams. And you have the same options there with regard to dates, most recent games, and picking your default team. You'll notice the scoreboard will change also depending upon the type of game, the type of league that's being covered. So if between football and baseball, the types of scoring, the periods, the things that are tracked are very different. For baseball, it includes things like the base runners, balls, um, strikes, outs, etc. whereas for football, you'll have quarters and the time. And this is consistent as you jump through the different types of leagues and coverage that are available in the live scores capability. If you choose college football, for example, then you just narrow down to the conference. And then once you narrow down to the conference, you have the same options around dates and teams that you want to follow. But keep in mind this isn't just for U.S. sports. There's a great deal of coverage for international football and soccer as well, in addition to golf. When you see the golf example, you'll notice that it's actually in the form of a leaderboard or ranking style. And therefore, it shows it in a much more contextual way that makes sense relative to the sport. Your users will also have the ability to choose players that they want to watch and follow from a particular event. So they can follow along where the overall leaderboard is going, or they can pick specific events that they want to, uh, or sorry, rather, specific players that they want to follow throughout the event. And those will be highlighted, and they can jump directly to them. They can also just toggle through and browse the entire leaderboard. Now, if we jump into EPL, you'll notice here that, again, it adjusts the scoring based on the game, and now we have it set up for uh, soccer and for European football. You'll also get data around records, around, and including the team logos and things like that that are all included as a part of the line scores. So now we'll get to it. Let's publish one of these, so you can see what it looks like on the front end and how users can interact with it. 
We'll keep most recent days games, and we'll go ahead and go back to our White Sox example for our default team. Now, once I publish this, it's included inside the event. You can see it here in the live event window inside the event studio, and we can also see it on our live event actually on the website. As you look at this, you'll see that users get the opportunity to see not only what's happening in the default game that you've picked, which is what will load any time a user visits your event, but they also can see a caller of scores, other scores going on in the league. So if there's another game that they want to check out, they can click on that particular game and see what's happening there. They can always come back to the game that you've picked by default, but this is a great way for them to keep up with other things going on in the league or in the conference in the case of college football. From here, the users, obviously, as the game is going on and gets updated, they can see all the different things that are happening um, with regard to the score and with regard to the state of the game. So it's pretty powerful, and if the user doesn't want to pay close attention to the score, then they can collapse it just like they can the rest of the information center, and the crawler will have score updates, just the basic score updates that continue to, to happen as well in real time. So they can still keep tabs, but if they want to pay more attention to the co great content that you're providing or the other things that are happening in the stream, then they can do it. If you want to remove the scoreboard and either change out team, league, or, or something else that you want to change about the, configura uh, the configuration of the live score, then you can do that. Simply click the trash can to remove the scoreboard, confirm it, and then now you can go back to adding another different type of score. Published by Sample Cards Game, even though it doesn't happen for a couple of weeks. And now that's already been updated real time instantly to all of those particular users. So as you can see, live sports have a lot of power, a lot of capability, and there's a great deal of coverage, and we're adding coverage all of the time. So if you have specific leagues uh, or events that aren't currently covered by a live score coverage, definitely let us know about that. We'd love to hear the feedback. We have other things that we're looking to add, both uh, sports outside of the U.S., including uh, cricket and Australian rules football that we um, are looking to get live scoring for, and also want to continue to add other leagues and teams and things for coverage like tennis and, and other um, more tournament-oriented sports. So those are all things that over over time that we'll be adding into the live scores capabilities. If you have other requests or other um, things that you're interested in, we'd love to hear about it. Coming back into the presentation, you can obviously see a great example here from Aston Planet and their coverage and, uh, uh, of soccer as well as uh, somethingphilly.com where they're covering baseball. The live scores obviously don't cover all sports all the time. There's a lot of other great scoreboard uses for covered live. There may be a lot of other different things that you're tracking. It could be uh, high school sports or it could be smaller colleges and universities that we don't have live feeds for. Um, or um, semi-professional leagues or uh, foundational leagues that are professional but maybe there isn't really access to live scoring available and you want to track those and provide those to your audience. Manual scoreboards are a great way to do that. There's a number of good examples in here, including traditional scores, as well as the leaderboard example that we saw within the PGA Golf setup. And let me jump over and show you now a little bit about manual scoreboards. So again, from the same scoreboard tab from the right-hand side, instead of choosing live scores, I'll choose manual scores. And then from here, you'll notice that you have the opportunity to, to choose the setup of the scoreboard. So for baseball, I can choose baseball, and again, mimicking what happens in the live scores, and I've got the same sort of information that I do in a live sport. I can track who's on base, balls, strikes, outs, um, runs, hits, and errors, et cetera, as well as give information about team records, names, and upload logos. Now, for depending on the event that you're covering, some of that may be too hard or too uh, difficult to keep track of on the fly, so you don't have to include that data. You have options to turn some of that off. So if you don't want to include the detailed center scoring, then you can simply slide that to off. If you don't want to include balls and strikes on baseball, you can slide that to off as well. And then as far as updating the rest of the data, you simply type it in. Now, if you want to add a logo, so that way your uh, audience can have a visual as to who you're tracking, then you can do that very easily. Simply click on the, uh, upload the uh, logo area, upload the logos that you want and that you have, and those will be added right in, and they'll look professional as the live scores. 
If there's certain data around the actual game that you don't have or don't know include, such as records, then you can just simply click in and remove that data. You can add the team's names, nicknames, mascots. And then whenever you're ready, simply publish your scoreboard. Now, at any time that you want to go make a change, you can simply do that from the event studio and publish the update. And then you have live, real-time scoring going from your manual scoreboard. You can make it as simple or as detailed as you like, depending upon the nature of the game and how much availability you have to track it. Again, here you can see this on the front end. The more detail that you can provide, the more engaging it's going to be for your scoreboard and the more useful to your audience. At the same time, some of these other sports may not have the details. You may not be able to keep up with that. So you have the flexibility uh, that you need over control or over displaying um, and keeping track of more detailed information. One cool thing to note across all the scoreboards, and I'll show a few other examples, is uh, that for things like football, for example, if you keep track of the score by quarter, then it will automatically add those up for you on the real-time score. So, for example, if I continue to update just a particular quarter as I'm updating a score, you'll notice that it's updating the tally for the teams as well. Which is pretty cool and makes it a lot easier for you to keep that detailed data going um, in, a, in, a quick, in a very quick and easy way. Again, any of the data that you want to update and track, you just simply type in that detail and save it. Whenever you're ready, publish it. Some default logos will be included if you don't provide them, but obviously you can always override that with your own information. So looking at some of the other scoreboards, you can add multiple manual scoreboards if you'd like. You can also remove them at any time by simply clicking the trash can icon. Real quick, real quickly, we'll walk through what some of the detailed info and what it looks like for some of the other sports. So here's basketball, for example, or college basketball, or other forms of basketball where they operate by halves instead of quarters. I'll make this clean these up to make it a little easier to see. So there's a college basketball or two halves basketball scoreboard. Um, we've already seen football. We'll take a look at hockey. So again, you can see here it has three periods. Um, it has a period in terms of the time tracking. And you can also add your own game notes and other information if you like. And then lastly, well, sorry, we also have soccer. And you can look at that by halves and keep track of your time. And then lastly is the leaderboard format, or race Standings. So if I add race and standings, that scoreboard actually allows two different views, either one single view with a list of everybody, and you can simply add these updates in and then very quickly, sorry, I clicked the, the uh, button twice there. Oh, see, this is a lowest score win sort of, sort of thing that I'm tracking. So here you've got your, your ranking updates. You can have it in this um, single column format or two column format. You can also resource these. Depending on whether it's high score or low score. And you can very quickly click in to edit and adjust these. So this is really useful for things like tournaments, for, for golf, for uh, uh, other sports like that where you may have uh, some sort of racing ranking going on or a leaderboard or, or an accumulated score if that's really what you're keeping track of. So uh, races are also another good example for this. But keep in mind it's not just for sports. You may also want to use scoreboards for other things that aren't sports related at all. It could be elections. We've seen examples of customers keep track of electoral accounts using the scoreboards or it may be um, during the debate you want to do a fun thing where you have points going on or different things like that. There's a lot of other great uses for tracking uh, rankings and scoreboards uh, using this particular method. So if you get creative, there's definitely some cool things that you can do. 
So Oakland conceded a lot of power, a lot of control with both the live scores as well as the manual scores, regardless of what type of sport or at what level it is that you're tracking. And it's a great way to engage and uh, add informative, useful information to your readership. And with a live score capability for professional and college sports, you don't even have to maintain it, making it easier for you to focus on your core content that you're providing. The score is not the only thing, obviously, your audience is interested in. If that were, they can get that through a number of different places, obviously. They're coming to you because you're going to interact with them. You're providing a lot of interesting commentary, or you're pulling out the best of social content that, uh, that is around the game or the match or the event, and that's what they're looking for you, uh, looking to you for. So we'll walk through some other examples of how you can engage your users and other cool things that you can do. One of the key things that um, always gets overlooked but is really simple and easy to do are polls. People love to respond because it doesn't require much effort and everybody's got an opinion. So sports members, sports fans in particular, always have an opinion on the best players. Do they think will win the game? What the problem is? What the next play should be run? And excuse me, in polling questions, whether you've got them pre-set up in advance through the media library and ready to go because of what the match or the game is going to be about, or whether you do them on the fly based on something that happens in the game are really, really engaging and useful. As a quick reminder, I'll walk through how you can set up polls and trivia. If you click the polls tab on the right-hand side, you have the ability to make them up on the fly. I can simply type it in, put in a few answers, and go. So again, all I have to do is type it in, take a few seconds, I can publish it. Now it's available in the event, everybody's getting a prompt to vote into it and or remain persistent inside the information window. So I can vote, take my pick. I'm going to go with Drew Brees. Somebody else has already voted for Aaron Rodgers. And right away, you've got engagement, people who will want to jump into that and respond and interact. Just to give you an idea, here's how that looks on, our, on the front end of our site. So we still have our scoreboard option available. The users can jump back over to a score, but when a poll is published, it will rotate over and show them the poll. And then they can vote in it at any point, or um, and they'll also receive a prompt whenever it's first launched. As we add more polls, those will scroll through as tickers, just like the scoreboards. And I'll show you an example where I, went to, I can pull in one of the uh, polls that I created in the media library beforehand. So now I'm going to publish a best college player poll. I've already set this up in the media library. As a quick reminder, where you do that is whenever you're logged into CoverItLive.com, you can click on the media library from the left-hand side. And here you can add any type of content, photos, images, pre-configured uh, text, advertising, anything that you want that you think you, that you know you're going to use in advance and you want to include in your event on the fly and not have to create it in real time. Just you can create it and store it in the media library ahead of time and have it really available. So there's already polls set up here, and if I click on the poll folder, I can add another poll to the folder. And it's a really great way for preparing your event ahead of time, especially when you know that you're going to run some of these particular types of engagement. So I've already created one around, so I think who's the best college player, here it is. I can kind of verify that what I want to do with it and then publish it. So now we've got another poll going. And this is around who do you think the best college player is. So people can cast their votes. Now we've got two polls running, and you can see a preview of that right here. Jumping back over into the full page view of our event. Here's our more recent poll that's been published on the best college player, but you can still see through the crawler the uh, both polls that are going on. Now if I want to jump back over to the scores and see those, and I can do that as a, as a reader, as a live audience member. Again, I can collapse this whole unit down, but I'll still see the crawler of the different things going on, and then at any point can choose to re-maximize them and engage and see what the poll results are. When you're ready, if there's any reason you want to close out the poll, you can do that. You can also just unpublish it. So say temporarily you want to pull that poll down, and you can remove publishing, and, it'll go, and the poll will be removed from the live experience. So it will be ended. You can re-enable it at any point, and start taking votes again. 
At one point you're done and you don't want to use the poll anymore, then you can end it and it will permanently remove it from the event and publish the result into the live stream. So again, polls are really fun. People love to vote in them. They're a great way to get your audience engaged for those who may not want to comment or maybe those who are just more passively following along but want to offer up their opinion. Similar to the polls, Another feature that you can do that works very similarly but also provides an added competitive element is trivia. Engagement with trivia is really great, especially for sports fans. There's so much great info and data that you can pull off um, to, to pique people's interest around a game, around the draft, around uh, a player chat, whatever it may be. So with trivia, you also have the ability to award points and use our gaming system um, if you want to allow people to sort of have, respond to multiple trivia questions throughout the course of an event and track their progress. Similar to polls, you can set those up on the fly, and they're right here under the trivia and live gaming link. You can also set them up in the media uh, library ahead of time, and I'll show you that from here as well. So here you get some more detailed information around live uh, scoring and trivia, or sorry, live trivia and gaming, and the different types of things that you can do. We'll focus on trivia, but keep in mind you can also do bets. And bets are questions, whether it's a regular bet or an odd bet, are questions where on the fly you can publish something like, do you think he'll make the next field goal 10 to 1 odd? And for those people who take it they'll, and they win it, then they, they get points for that. And those who lose, they lose points. And you can use that as a way to gamify in the event what's happening and have people compete based on things that are happening directly inside of, of the match of the game that you're covering. So it's pretty cool and a great way to engage the audience and get really competitive. You can come up with a lot of cool things around people making the next shot, scoring who will score the next point, which team will score uh, first. Um, all those sort of things, you can have those set up ahead of time for things that you know will happen in every game, much like the uh, micro events that happen around the Super Bowl, or you can have them be in response to things that are happening during the game. So that's a great example, um, but we'll start with trivia, which is one of the more simpler and easier things to get going with. So on the fly, I can decide that I want to add trivia. One thing to note is that for users to participate in trivia or any of the other gaming elements outside of polls, they do have to log in. And so you will be prompted to ask what sort of login options you want to provide. We have social options, including Facebook and Twitter and others. And also, it can be integrated to your own login for your own site if you want. And we can follow up with more detail offline if that's something that you're interested in. Now, I've created uh, trivia in the media library already. So again, you can see that I can just type it in here. Um, very quickly and then go, or I can select from the media library something that I've already created. So in this case, I uh, included a question that who is the last team to go undefeated in the preseason and actually win the Super Bowl? I've already pre-configured this, put in some answers, and then check who that answer is. Now I can decide that I want to award points, and how many points do I award for it? And we'll give 20. So once I'm ready, I can decide that I want to publish this. And notice that you can come back at any point and close out the trivia question whenever you're ready to tell everybody the right answer and award them their points. Um, up until that point, people continue to vote, just like they do in a poll, but they don't know if they've gotten correct, uh, an incorrect answer and not all the points have been accumulated yet. So now once I save that, I can continue to manage my trivia and do more with it, or I can go ahead and close it out. And now you can see that the trivia question has shown up, and I can decide to vote in that and decide if I can get my points or not. I'm pretty sure it's a 97 pack. Here you can see the example of users being prompted to log in. And the login options that we've chosen. I'll use my Twitter account. And now I can vote. I'm sure it's the 97 Packers, even though I set up the question and actually know the right answer. Nonetheless, I find out that I'm incorrect and I've lost my points. Now, if I go back to trivia and gaming at any point, I can also see how many people are participating and playing on a particular trivia question. Here I can see that there are two participants already. And I can also jump in and see a scoreboard of who all has participated in all the trivia or bets that I've provided so far and what their standings and how many points they um, have won are. If you need to adjust or override, you can do that as well. 
And you can actually have this scoreboard published into the event so people can keep track and see what they're doing as well. So it's a really powerful component. There's a lot of great things that you can do between trivia and also with the different types of events. And so this is definitely something that you should get, it with, um, get into and play with in advance of an event and try out because it's a lot of really cool things that you can do, and it's a very unique and engaging experience that your audience won't be able to find in other places. So jumping into more of the content that's oriented around your event, what, there's a few different ways you can do it. One thing to keep in mind that we always urge people is that the covering, the, uh, covering a game or a match in particular is not just about that particular game or that particular match. If there's build up before it, there's pre-game coverage, there's people wanting to talk about it afterwards. So keep that event going. In fact, keep an ongoing social stream happening uh, throughout the entire week or throughout the days leading up to it because people will be talking about it, things will be happening with players, and there's a lot to keep track of. Even if you can't actively uh, moderate and, and manage the entire time, you can use great tools that we built into Covered Live to have ongoing social content added. So you can disable comments or disable users from being able to submit things directly when you're not able to um, directly monitor it, but include Twitter content or selectively publish things as it becomes as they become available from other sources that you have providing info. Some examples of this include things that we've covered a lot in other CILU sessions, and so I'll just barely touch on it. But one of the key ones is what you can do with Twitter and the automated content that you can pull in. So in this example here, you could be following specific people or lists. You could add those and have that content being pulled in. So here, if I want to search for example, for say for example the NFL's um, own Twitter account, then I could do that and have that added. So that's been validated, and I could either do a, a few different things here. I could have this content published automatically to my live event without any interruption from me and just any time there's a new tweet from the NFL have it automatically published in or I can moderate it. In this case when moderating is on it will come into the smart screen here and I can review it before it goes live. I can do the same thing with users with lists, with Twitter lists as well as keywords and hashtags and I have these additional options around whether or not the content should include a link, should include images and, and retweets. In addition to our top tweets proprietary filter that allows us to automatically decide just the content that's the best based on retweets um, and based on number of followers that are coming for a particular hashtag um, or keyword. You can dial them to include all content or only the top based on what our system determines is the best and most qualitative tweet, uh, Twitter content. You can always search Twitter directly as well and provide content in real time uh, from, from searches that you want to do and pick out specific pieces. And you have all of the same sort of flexibility that you do whenever you're setting up the automated or moderated Twitter content, such as including images and links, selecting languages and retweets, um, users and or lists and replies. So I've already got a good bit of Twitter content that has been queuing up. As you'll notice in the smart stream, I have paused my smart stream so that way it wouldn't be updating nonstop while we're doing the demo here. But the smart stream is keeping track of all the new content that's flowed in since I've opened up the event studio, and it, there's 407 new items. A lot of these are Twitter content items that are being queued up for me to review based on including the NFL hashtag in the NFL account. So as these items come in, I can review them, I can pause, so that way while I'm looking at content, it, the new content doesn't come in and disrupt my, my flow. And then I can pick just the best content that I want to publish. So let's say I find something compelling from a user or from a journalist or from uh, somebody else on my team who may be tweeting and covering it, and I can selectively publish that. I can choose to clear out other things or just ignore them. I can also search and filter, and this goes not just for Twitter content, but also for comments or any other content that's been queued up inside the smart screen, which we'll come back to in just a moment. So in addition to using Twitter content, and whether it be from users or journalists or from um, media members who may be covering the event or they're live and provide content directly, uh, you can also obviously engage with your users based on their questions and comments. And there's a lot of powerful tools for running game day coverage, live blogging sort of coverage around game day that are built into the system. In addition to the moderation capability you have with the smart stream and the ability to search and find different types of content, including comments, from a number of different sources, or to search by keyword and see just the things that have come from them, or just the things that have come from Wilson, 
or to based upon a keyword. I can also decide that some of this content is great, but I'm not ready to publish it right this second. Or maybe I have a team working with me who's reviewing it at any given point in time. And they're going through and filtering the best items. So here's all the recent comments that have come in, and they're excuse me, working with me while I'm providing commentary and providing updates and color about the game. They're working with me and looking through either Twitter content or comments coming from users and deciding that they want to tag it. And not ready to publish it yet, but they're going to queue it up for me to look at. So they use the tagging capability built into the smart screen. It's also available in the search content areas as well for any of the social content or for the comment or robust search, as well as from the smart stream where you have your most recent content. Any of these areas, you can select content and tag it. And then once it's tagged, it's very easy to find within the smart stream by looking at just the tagged content. You can look at all tagged content or restrict it to only tagged content of a certain color. And you can decide that, hey, orange things are, are questions from users that you need to answer. And so I can look at that. And decide, oh, what's the most popular type of pass of uh, scoreboard? Let me get ready for that. I can get my answer ready. Have it all ready to go. Publish that particular question. Publish the answer. And then have that content go right next to each other in line so that way the flow is not disrupted and we've answered the user's question as well and queued it up. So it's a great way for working with teams uh, to find the best content, to have it queued up, to publish it at the right time, whether it's a game day live blog or whether it's covering the draft or it's a Q&A with a player, uh, any of those sort of things that you can do or general Q&A, you can have those co that content queued up, ready for the producer or the panelist to answer and have those, uh, those entries and those responses synchronized and go out so it's a great flow and a great experience for your users. Plus, you're also not just publishing all of the content, things that are redundant, things that may not be appropriate. You're publishing the best content and being able to answer things and respond to things adequately. There's also a great tool for managing how uh, that workflow works behind the scenes with the private messaging capability. So you can see any of your other producers or panelists that are inside the event and that are available to review content from the smart stream or provide content directly, and you can message with them. I can let Spencer know to take the green items, send him a message. I can also send a message to every producer and panelist that's in the event. I can also give some ideas around how we want to use the tagging, for example. So let's use green for questions, blue for good tweets. Spencer take green, Dan take blue. And I can also do just individual messages or the whole group depending upon what is needed. I can see the response from Spencer, and any time there's communication within the event studio, I'm going to get a nice little prompt even if my private message window is collapsed. So if I want to broadcast things globally to the group who's working with me on the event, or I want to just tell specific individuals certain things, um, maybe about certain content that's come through that they need to remove, then I can do that. So again, there's a lot of powerful tools for working with the team, for allowing other people to work with you, to manage ongoing commentary, to manage um, well the different conversation is, to pull in the best content whenever you may have a large amount or a, um, or a lot of different feedback from your users and from the social stream. The other thing that's really great about covering sports is there's always lots of great media and images. And we've seen a few examples of those already. If you work with Covert Library much, then you know there's a lot of flexibility around adding content in, particularly around photos and video content. With any event studio, there's a number of different ways to do this easily. If I get my event open, I can drag and drop content directly in right away. So I've got something on my desktop or I've got it in a folder on my machine. I can just simply drag and drop it right into the event stream. Once it's uploaded, it's going to ask me some options around, do I want to add a caption? Do I need to adjust anything, rotate the picture at all? So I can add my caption. I can do rich formatting. If I don't want to add captions in the future for this event, I can indicate that I don't want to show this again because I'm just going to broadcast. I just want to publish images quickly. 
now that image is there. I can also upload it. If dragging and dropping isn't as easy for me, then great. I can go and find it from uh, from my folder or from my desktop or wherever I put it and upload it that way as well. And again, I get the same sort of options around whether or not I want to caption it or not. That content gets published right away. It's also available. I can go back and reference it later in the event library. Um, and that makes it very, very quick and easy to publish images. But there's a number of other ways as well. One thing is that you can always pull content from the media library. So if you know you're going to use some particular stats or images ahead of time and you want to have those readily and available for just the right moment, then just like we did with trivia or polls or any of the other content, you can have them available in the media library and then just jump over to that when you're ready, find the content that you want, and then you can publish it. Or you can even tag it to the smart screen first. So in this case, for example, I'm going to take this image and put it in the smart screen because I want to be able to get to it really, really quickly. So now I'm looking at my tag items. I'm looking at just my orange items. There is the image from the media library that I tagged. And now it's just the right time. Steve just made a great putt, and it'll be a great moment, and it'll be just the right time to put in a nice, great photo of him. So the media library is very powerful, but it's not the only tool. There are a few others as well that you want to make sure you know uh, that are available to you. One of those um, is the ability for your users to attach and send uh, images directly in the event. So this is an option that you can enable for the um, for the particular event. You can have it to where any of your users who are submitting comments and or questions can upload media as a part of that as well. And again, it's moderated um, unless you've auto-approved them. So as just a user, I can say here's a good one. I can go find the image that I want to upload. And as that gets uploaded and sent, that will appear for me as a comment in the events video. Let's jump back into my comments. So there it is. One cool thing about this that you can notice is that I've got, I may have a mixture of photo and text in my comments. And in addition to just looking at recent comments, I can also restrict this down to just image comments. And so I can find those quickly and publish them as well. So there's a lot of search and filtering available on the smart screen um, to help with, with these different types of, of uh, discovery for content. So your users can do that directly from uploading it directly to the event. They also have the ability to email it if you've enabled this. So one thing you'll notice under the news flash section is we have comment via email enabled for this particular event. Your users can then jump in and then hit an email for that particular event. Send it off to you. And also include attachments. And they can also attach photos or other media um, as a part of that email as well. And then that will come in as an email comment in the event studio, which you can then decide whether or not you want to publish and moderate. So there's a lot of great ways that you can get UDC from out the field. And a couple of others worth mentioning is, is also that our, um, there is a native app available for Cover Live for, for maybe it's people at the game or journalists out in the field, even for other um, examples or at the draft or any sort of a major press announcement. You can use the Cover Live native mobile app for Android and iOS that will allow you to take photos directly from the device and upload those right into the event. You can also manage comments and a bunch of other features and add content directly as well. So that's another great way, particularly for getting rich media content into the event um, in, a, in a really quick way whenever you're not necessarily, don't necessarily have access to Event Studio. If you do have access to the Event Studio, even for your tablet, keep in mind it has been optimized to work with tablets. And so it's also a great resource to use the full suite of functionality available in the Event Studio, um, even if you're out on the road or out in the field, if you have access to an iPad or a similar tablet and want to use that, you can. So the last area um, around this is the API. There's a very robust Cover Live API that allows you to submit content of all sorts, including images. Um, and I'm not going to jump into coding examples right now, but if you're somebody who, want, who has some understanding of that or you have a team that's available to you that may want to programmatically put in um, photos from other systems, whether it's your content management system, whether it's a feed elsewhere, you can do that very easily. And there's even an example on our support center under the Cover Live API on the site where we're pulling in live content from a Flickr feed using the API. So there's a number of different ways to make this easy and quick for you, um, as well as providing a great experience for your users. 
So whether it's through one of these means or you want to jump into it from a social um, opportunity, whether that's Instagram or Twitter or YouTube or others, there's a lot of different ways that you can get great photo and media data into your event that really makes um, your users want to stay, want to participate, and really enjoy the event. One last example I'll uh, show around this. And uh, just a reminder about some of the power that you have with regard to the social search that's built into the event studio. So in addition to searching your user comments or the Twitter examples that we looked at earlier, you can also search Instagram, YouTube, uh, or include RSS feeds of other content that you want to include. So I can search in a Instagram, for example, for NFL preseason and find great content that I want to publish very, very quickly. Or queue it up in the smart stream to use later. Similarly, I can carry forth that search to YouTube and publish any content that I want to from there. If I need to pull snippets or look up player info or things like that, on Wikipedia, to provide a snippet and a reference for people, I can also do that as well. Now, you may have even more in-depth examples from uh, your own content and your articles that you have access to, the RSS team, and you can enter those here and pull in that content as well. I've already done a few from the past. We have a few that are readily available in the tool, but once you add an RSS feed, you can always come back and reuse it, and it will be listed here inside the event studio. So, for example, I'm going to pull in some content from Dan Westphal, and I can see his RSS feed, search through it, look at the different content that's available, and then publish items. So the RSS feed is a great way to pull content from other sources, whether it's Facebook, uh, Pinterest, Flickr feeds, blogs, Tumblr, anything else that you may be using and that's a part of your regular routine around covering sports and you want to pull that content in. Um, that's a great resource and, and means to do that very quickly and easily. As mentioned earlier, it's not just about the game coverage, although obviously that's a key part of what people want to follow. There's a lot of other great things you can do to maximize your sports coverage, whether, that, whether that's the opportunity to have access to players, or just talk with experts and people, whether it's fantasy chat and recommendations around who you should pick, people who've done detailed analysis, or even just really good fans who are thoughtful and have a lot of cool things to say. You could invite them to have uh, Q&As that really feature your community and feature those who you're engaging with and make it very cool for them to want to come back and engage more. And we have a lot of great examples with player chats, with draft coverage, and other things leading up to games, um, not just about the games themselves. So keep those in mind when you're looking at new and cool ways that you want to do your sports coverage. So we've covered a great deal of content. Um, hopefully you found a lot of things that were beneficial, maybe you learned some new things or reminded of some things that you haven't used before and gotten more comfortable with a lot of the features that we've added around scoring, around social, and all the different ways that you can pull in rich media and social content into your events and manage those very easily. Uh, if there's any questions that you'd like us to be able to address, then uh, please make sure to enter those now, and Spencer will get those queued up. And uh, as a reminder that you can always connect with us, afterwards, or if you have follow-up questions later, support and cover it live, as well as following us on Twitter and Facebook for more great examples of these particular uh, types of um, uh, features and uh, great customers that are doing cool things with the product. As a reminder, you can submit the uh, questions that you have through the WebEx client chat window, green tab at the top of your screen, click chat, and submit those uh, to us, and we will answer them live here on the call. And while we're looking at those, and we'll take this opportunity to remind you that next time at Cover Live, we'll be, learning, we'll be walking through some of the new features uh, yet to be unveiled, but into that, we'll have the, what, our last few Cover Live university session, um, and those will be coming out very, very shortly. So keep in mind that you'll, you'll check your uh, Cover Live account page, check the event studio, check the announcements, our blog, um, Facebook, and Twitter, as whenever that new release rolls out, there's a lot of cool things there that will also be able to help with sports as well as all sorts of other live coverage that you can use I'm in Cover It Live, and we'll have those features available very soon, and we'll do a complete walkthrough in our next Cover It Live University session on September 26th. Um, I think a lot of those things will be things that you will find to be really helpful in these contexts, really cool ways to feature content um, and to promote the best of what's happening inside of your event, as well as some great new flexibility around how your events can look and feel to your audience. And we do have some questions coming in. Keep those coming, uh, but we'll get started. I have our, our first question from Anna. Are there any of these features, particularly live scoring, um, that are mobile-friendly? 
Now, that's a great question, and one um, thing that, that's great to keep in mind is that all of the features available to Covert Live Window by default, whenever you, when you see the standard Covert Live Window, all of those are functional um, on mobile, and whether that's tablet or whether it's um, phones and smaller form factors like a, you know, like small phone devices that are smartphones and, and have um, browser capability, all of those features are available. So your standard iOS, Android, um, phones will have the ability to see all of that same content from the Covert Live window and it is functional. Now, there is also um, an option to have a specific mobile Covert Live window. Um, and there's information on the support center of our site about how you can manually cause that to open. Whenever users view Cover It Live, a standard Cover It Live window on a mobile device, there will be a small icon that appears in the information center of the Cover It Live event that the user can click, which will blow up the event to take up the full screen of their mobile window, and it will adjust the layout and the um, scrolling and things like that to be more suitable for the touch, you know, small touch devices. Um, all of the same functionality does still come through in those cases. Scoreboards and some of the other items are more scaled down to meet uh, you know, essentially the form factor and, and the size available on the screen to the user there. Um, but they can also always go back to the full cover live screen, which is fully functional on their standard mobile device as well. It's just a matter of preference. If you can manually invoke that mobile experience on your website, if you'd like, and there's information in our support center on how to do that and how to override the, the default cover live settings around that. Additionally, in our next link in 310, there's going to be a lot more flexibility around the Cover It Live um, interface and the widget and the embed that allows you to do things that are responsive and that will automatically adjust to the page that the user is viewing depending upon responsive design, if you're using that for your mobile experiences, or even just have a specific mobile template. So there's a number of options there. We, could, uh, prob we can have done in the past, and probably should do another CILU solely on all the different um, elements that you can do and how you can handle mobile in different ways depending upon what's your priority and what's your strategy. But the key thing to keep in mind is the basic cover live standard window is fully functional in all mobile devices and, and users can access all of those features there. I have some more questions coming in. This one from Aaron. Um, how early can you set up a game and uh, could you, for, for example, set up a whole season in advance? So you can set up a game as soon as essentially um, our data feed provider that we partnered with, as soon as the games have become available on the schedule and they have those set up, you can set up the game. Uh, and, and really what we're talking about when we're talking about setting up the game is setting up the score specifically, because you can set up the event at any point in advance. Those feeds are normally available well in advance, weeks or even months um, in most cases, and the uh, specific day schedules normally only go a week to ten days um, if you're wanting to pull out a specific day. So if you're wanting to do an event every day or, um, or pick only the games from that specific day, then you normally have about a week to ten days in front of the event that you can set up that particular scoreboard. But keep in mind with the most recent day's uh, game option that you can always set that up and it will continuously roll and you don't have to go and change it. So just depending upon what you're aiming to do, um, you can have that option set up perpetually, even when during the off season. Once the new games come in, they'll automatically flow in under that setting. Uh, but if you're wanting to pick it based on specific days, then it will be available, you know, a few weeks to even a month or more in advance, um, and you can pick up to seven to ten days in advance, depending upon the league. And we have a question here from Amy, uh, questioning them whether you can have manual scores, have, can you have multiple manual scoreboards and have a scroll at the top like you do with the automated scoreboard? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, there isn't a way easily for manual scores to do that currently, although it's a feature that we'll look at expanding in the future. You can't have multiple, man multiple manual scoreboards that you publish to and can maintain at any given point in time, but um, we can actually follow up more detail to understand exactly what you're covering and, and what some of the examples are, um, but that is a feature that we'll be looking to add, but it's not currently available. Um, and then you also ask, if you were to build a leaderboard for one event, can you easily access that a leaderboard for another event later? That's another great question and actually uh, a great suggestion. Um, it's not currently that, that possible to do that. Um, the, essentially, the leaderboard gets created and is stored with that particular current event. So even whenever you duplicate an event in the future and duplicate the settings, the details of how you filled out that leaderboard are not there. But that, that's a great suggestion. Definitely something we'll look at adding in the future. 
in one way that if you were running perhaps a multi-day event and you wanted that scoreboard to be persistent across multi-day, an option that may work well for you would be run a, to run a cover live picker as opposed to a cover live event since it's a multi-day event. Just a suggestion. And Amy did have one more question. Um, can a viewer see the scoreboard and poll or is it an either or situation? So in terms of seeing, uh, let me jump over and, and show you the example. Currently, in terms of which one they see the full detail on, it's an either or. Now, once they click on things, like for example, once they click on the score, then they're going to see the ticker scrolling through for the scores. Whenever they click on the polls, they'll see the ticker scrolling through for the polls and the trivia and, and each of those particular pieces. Um, however, if they haven't actually responded or taken an action on one of these items, then they'll see whatever the most recent one that you've added from your event or the most recent one that you've updated is what it will rotate through to. And these can um, rotate through the tickers, and then they can obviously see as they're added, they'll get new icons as new things are added as well, and that's brought to the forefront. But in terms of drilling in and seeing the detail, they can only see one of those at a time um, through the sort of the standard cover live experience. Now, a couple of things to note about that. We have had some of our customers who have, using the API, taken and featured some of the functionality off to the side of the standard event. So you may not have developers or may not be able to do that directly yourself. So it may not be the best option, but it is something that you can potentially look at with your team and in terms of ways that you can feature that other content in a persistent way on the page if you wanted to using our API. But even better than that, um, in, the, in the next couple of releases that you'll see over the next four to six weeks, we will actually have more flexibility for you to pull out certain pieces of the event and have those featured not just in the screen, but also in other places on the page if you like. So at that point, while it's not available now, it is coming soon where you'll have the flexibility to say, take, say, a poll and have that be in one place on the page, maybe above the event, and then have the rest of your event running. And then you could also have the scoreboard below that and have all of those things be visible at once um, and on distinct parts of pages or even laid out differently if you, if you like. And that's part of some of the flexibility that's coming up um, in 310 and releases in September that will give you much more control uh, over that layout and over that flexibility. And right, we'll give a couple more minutes if there are any other questions. If you want to submit those, uh, we'll pause just momentarily uh, so you can roll in. And these are all really good, great questions. If you have some other specific questions that you'd like, to follow up with um, or dive a little bit deeper, by all means, contact us through support or through one of the other means that we've mentioned with Facebook and Twitter, et cetera. Let us know, and we can uh, follow up with other conversations. All right. Well, if we don't have any further questions, uh, we appreciate you joining us today at Cover Log University. Uh, we like sharing with you information. Uh, keep everybody up to speed on what's going on. Um, as Ben mentioned, next session Thursday, September 26th at 11 a.m. Eastern. We'll learn more about Covered Live 3.10.